beautiful people and welcome to my channel if this is one of the first videos of mine that you're watching please hit the subscribe button down below as well as hit the bell notification to make sure that my videos do pop up on your subscription box i post videos every single week i've now changed my schedule to actually wednesdays and saturdays the times are a bit uh all over the place because i'm still trying to find the momentum but yes please subscribe if you really like what you see on my channel for today's video something i wanted to do for a very long time and that is speaking about confidence and self-love because i've come a very long way in the past five years um to accept myself and love myself for who i am and i thought maybe sharing my journey and telling you how i got to this point of my life might help you with any issues that you're facing or it might help you to also like yourself like myself um accept yourself and love yourself before i start a disclaimer is that in no way am i saying that these tips will work it's just what worked for me as well as i'm not saying that i'm confident or uh, love myself 100 percent of the time because i am human and i do compare myself and i do fall prey to other people's words but Overall, I think I've come a very far way and I really hope that this video will help. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. The first part is going to basically tell my journey of how I was and am right now. And then the second part is going to be the tips of how I came to be as I am now. So let's head on to my actual journey. So let's start from the beginning. As a child, I was very confident extremely extroverted i was that kid that um, if there was a new person in class i would be the first to greet them or if we were at a family function and there was a dance floor i would be the first one there trying to convince everyone else to come and always speaking my mind and being extremely loud and um I was extremely adventurous as well. I loved going on hikes and trying out adrenaline rush things and going out with family and things like that. And then, as you guys know, I moved to Cape Town when I was around six or seven. And I still remained the same, didn't really change. Obviously, I just grew up and maybe my thoughts or words kind of changed, but my personality as a whole stayed the same. Um, however, when I moved back to Johannesburg when I was 11, that was where I would say the biggest change came. And that's because I was so sure of myself in Cape Town. I was so um, close with my family. I was very, very sure of the friends that I had and the routine that I had that when I came to Johannesburg, although I had so much of family here, and although I had lived here before, being six and being in Joburg versus being 11 or 12 is kind of different. You're in different ways of life. You've just start, you've like gone through the whole primary school phase. Okay, not the whole thing, but you know what I mean? Like you're not in like grade R or whatever anymore. You've been through primary school. So your personality does change and the way you perceive an area can change. And that's what happened with me when I moved to Joburg. I hated being here for the first six months i cried almost every single day to go back i really missed my friends and my family and the life that we had there and so it took me extremely long to adjust to being in a different place and making new friends and although i would like to think of myself as a friendly person it didn't come as naturally to me as i thought it would when i moved back and the second thing that happened that year is that, I don't know if this is too much information, but I did come off age. And a lot of statistics show that when um, people uh, hit puberty, especially women, their confidence level shoots right down. It depletes dramatically. And me being as young as I was when I did come off age, I think since with the move and like still being so young and unsure of myself and along with all the changes that were happening to my body i became extremely extremely um withdrawn i gained weight extremely fast and although yes i had been educated on it and my parents had had the talk with me um i didn't expect it to happen as fast i wasn't i wouldn't say i was like 
a, a thin child growing up i mean i had cheeks and i had a very round face but um when this happened i i don't know i think it, it was just too much for my brain to process at that time that i felt i had no control over what my body was starting to look like and i became very very self-aware in the most negative way possible everything i did i critiqued myself on looking in the mirror when i was wearing something that didn't look nice on me i'd feel like i you know i didn't have a very good self-image that's the point that i'm trying to get across and i was just very uncomfortable being myself because i stopped being as loud as i was because i didn't want to draw attention to myself um, I didn't really like going out because I feel people would judge me. I was just, yeah, I was just very uncomfortable in my skin and um, I did not really, um, I wasn't really the same person I was before that time. On top of this, I did go through a period of bullying. Uh, I did well in school. I'm not gonna um, sugarcoat it. I did do well in school. And I also, my eyesight got really bad. I have something called astigmatism, which is basically where your eyes like aren't shaped like a rugby ball. They are, I mean, they're not shaped like a soccer ball. Like, so they're not round. They're quite like almond shape. Um, and so that sometimes can give you headaches and help struggle, um, make you struggle with your eyesight. And so I wore glasses. I also, when I decided, um, not when I decided, you can't decide when your teeth fall out. When my, when my teeth decided to fall out, as you can see, I have a gap here, which I've actually grown to love, and I'll get to that in my tips. But um, being someone that had a gap in their teeth and a big forehead, and, you know, I was very, very nerdy in school. I had glasses. Um, I got bullied a lot for it. I wouldn't say to the extent that most people get bullied for, which I'm very, very thankful for, but I did have people that picked on me for having a big forehead saying like you know your head shines or whatever and I also had um at one point when I think I was in grade eight someone actually came and they spat on my face and being so self-loathing at that time I was so bad that I just felt you know what I actually probably deserved it maybe I am whatever they were spitting on me for or things like that and now it's easy for me to speak about it because there's so much else that I want to say but I want to get more quickly into the actual tips that helped me but those are the biggest um things in my journey along with social media I only got my first phone when I was around 13 or 14 and with that obviously comes social media so Instagram came when I was I think I was 11, but I only started getting it when I was like, I don't know, let's say 14. That's when I got Instagram. And I fell into the trap of looking at people's lives and thinking it is so perfect and they had perfect, perfect bodies. And I started comparing myself a lot to people online, to my friends who were the sweetest people, but I'm human and I'm going to compare myself to people that I surround myself with and especially my sister my sister um if you guys have you guys have seen her she's ex not extremely thin she's actually gotten better over the years but she is quite thin she's much more thinner than I was at her age and she's thinner than me now and for a long time I I compared myself to her and I hate that because like you're not supposed to do that with your siblings but I think I just was very very um not sure of myself that I was like how can my sister be thinner than me when we like have the same DNA when we eat the same things and so falling into that trap just kind of made it even worse I was also extremely tomboyish growing up I still am I mean not now what I'm looking like um now I have quite a big balance but I was extremely tomboyish growing up I think I only started wearing dresses and skirts like for my own liking probably last year my staples were always jeans and sneakers and um shirts and that's still my style now but like sometimes you know I like to be a little bit more um girly <laughs> if I can say but that's what happened I was not into doing makeup and I grew up with people that always did like makeup did like jeans and I had family members saying 
um, why don't you be more girly and so that also just added to me feeling very bad about myself not feminine and so that all everything I've just said kind of contributed to it as well as part of the whole bullying thing um I don't know if this can count it but I was left out of things quite a lot of times um I'm going to be totally transparent there's obviously so many um um people that do drink underage and people in my grade were one of them I'm not gonna lie about it um in South Africa the legal drinking age is 18 and I took a vow with my parents um to have my first drink with them when I was 18 and I made this promise probably when I was like 12 and I kept that up until I turned 18 and although now I do feel it's one of the best things that I did because when I turned 18 I truly felt like something had changed you know I got to go to the casino for the first time and I got to go to the club for the first time and I got to have a drink with my my parents or my friends for the first time but being 16 for instance and being left out of parties because people think you're going to be snobbish or you're going to judge them what's not your kind of environment without even asking me you know I'm not a judgmental person but people assumed that I would tell on them or I judge them for drinking not that I would I mean it's your life your body you do what you need to but that's basically also made me feel like I'm not worthy enough of um being friends with people, being loved by people. And also, if you didn't know, I'm 20 and I've never been in a romantic relationship before, which I absolutely don't mind. I just feel when the time is right, things will come my way. But again, being 16 and seeing all your friends going out with their respective others or having some sort of love life, you do compare yourself. And that's what happened to me. And so all of these factors, I've said that about three times now, but all of this did lead to a very, very bad self-image. Leading on to the second part, which is all about my tips. So let's get on to that. My parents did something for me that truly changed my life and how I perceived myself. And that was getting help. I told them everything and I'm very thankful that my parents and I do have an open relationship where they noticed what was going on with me and I could talk to them once I felt confident enough that I can talk to them. But yes, so I did two things that helped me. And the first thing is called Winning Edge. Um, this is available in South Africa. I'm really not sure if it's available overseas, but it's basically a program that is about hands-on um, self-discovery. So for me, what it targeted is my self-confidence and self-image. And I took that for a year when I was 14 or 15. And the second thing is that I did see a psychologist. I went for about three lessons or whatever. And, you know, I spoke about everything that was going on, what my self-image was like. And something that she said in one of our sessions is something that I remind myself whenever, like, I'm thinking something bad about myself. And so she used the analogy where she said, take a ruler and hit yourself. And I was like, why are you making me hit myself? I would never do this to myself, you know? She was like, exactly. She said, the same way you're feeling that hitting yourself physically is horrible to yourself or like not right to do by yourself or something that you shouldn't do. It's the same thing when you are mentally tormenting yourself and comparing yourself and saying things that are hurtful towards yourself. You should never do that because it's causing you pain. So why would you do something that's causing you pain? And so that's something that I even use up till this day, which is five or six years later. I still use that analogy when I'm berating myself. Second tip is to do what you love. So what I mean by this is to do things that make you feel confident. And two things for me that help me with this is obviously my dancing. I can never, ever live without that. And the second thing is public speaking. I know a lot of people hate public speaking, but for me, it's one of my favorite things to do. And that's probably also why I started my YouTube channel. I love talking about serious topics or just giving um, speeches in general and just talking to people. And so those two things really, I did it weekly and it really helped me feel some self-worth and see that I am good in something and um, really appreciate myself for the skills that I had. 
The third thing is something that I'm sure most of you know about and that is doing self-affirmations. I've been doing self-affirmations almost every single morning and sometimes evening since I have a mirror right here in my room as well as in my bathroom and I've been doing that for about again five or six years and seriously just telling yourself three things such as I am beautiful, I am confident and I am smart or I am good at this, this and this can really, really do so much for your mental health in the morning and make you feel good in the morning and make you feel good throughout the day. And I really do encourage you to start doing self-affirmations, whether that is through visualization or through just saying it through your mirror or just writing it down, just something in the morning and or the evening to um, say something about yourself that you are grateful for or that you love about yourself. And yeah, that is basically all you need to know about affirmations. The fourth thing seems very um, common, like common sense, but I swear this took me a very long time to know, and that is to surround yourself with good people. I've had people in my life that I've felt obligated to keep in, you know, because of um, the, the time that I've known them or um, what they've done for me previously. But obviously, honestly, if someone is not doing well for you in your life at that point and you've spoken to them like three or four times and told them how you felt and they still continue to be those people that's when your relationship becomes toxic and i swear once you um pull away from those people i'm not saying cut them off and being be rude and like be like i never want to see you again pull away from them find people or surround yourself with people that make you feel good about yourself that hype you up or that um reaffirm what they feel about you that can make you feel good don't keep on hanging on to a relationship that you know is not doing well for yourself because you feel that um you are obligated to and that's a very big thing that i actually learned especially last year um i went through a lot of changes in my life I went to university unfortunately i've said before i lost my grandmother and through that whole year last year i learned a lot about the people that stuck there for me helped me through what i was going through and those are the people that i'm closest to now the fifth thing which kind of goes with self-affirmations is to get to know yourself and be self-aware and by this i mean for instance i'm going to use myself I know that I am good in school. I know that I am a good dancer. I know that I hope to be a good person. I know that I am easy to talk to and I hope that I am friendly towards other people. Knowing that self, those things about yourself makes it easier for you to not really care that much about what people say about you. Obviously, sometimes there are good well, uh, not good well, there are well wishes for you who will give you constructive criticism, which you can use to improve yourself. But for the most part, if someone uses something against you, um, it won't hurt as much if you know what you're good in, for instance, or if you know that you're not good at something and someone says that about you, that's okay, because I know who I am and I'm content with who I am. And it's so much more easier said than done. And for me to say this stuff on on online right now it's something i've wanted to do for such a long time and it looks like it's coming out easy but trust me it's been a very long process to get to where i am today to be able to say what i'm good in what i'm not and be okay with that and not let other people change the image that i have about myself with this also goes that you have to understand not everyone is gonna like you i've been a please a uh, people's pleaser for so many years in my life that um I know exactly how it feels to say, you know what, people just aren't going to like you sometimes and that's okay because you were not put on this earth to make other people like you, it was for you to like yourself and for you to build the life that you want to live. And that's what I say always to people when they ask me, how do you remain confident? How do you remain so unbothered? How do you um, not allow other people to influence what you say and that's what I tell them all the time it's because I'm living the life that I want to and that is something that I really do believe in is because you are building the life that you want to live right now I'm not saying disregard other people but 
your life is meant for you to live to live it how you want to with obviously taking into consideration other people's feelings i would never ever say that you just need to cut out people and be rude just because you want to get something you have to consider other people sometimes but when it comes to people trying to degrade your self-worth and trying to make you feel bad about your choices that is something that you need to know that you need to know what you're building your life up to and is what you're doing kind of getting you there if it is don't feel bad about making the choices that you have the second thing is something called social media have you heard of it it's that little thing like instagram and facebook but i said in my journey part of this video that i let instagram control my life for a very long time but then um especially at the beginning of this year i started thinking about why does it control us so much and that's because we give it the power to what was social media initially kind of made for it was made for communication, connecting people. It was made for uh, voicing opinions, such as right now, LGBTQ matters, Black uh, Lives Matter, things like that. And it was also made as a creative outlet, such as uh, YouTube or Instagram in terms of photography. That is what social media is meant for. It was never meant as a platform to bully people and to compare yourself to. And when I am feeling like social media is getting too toxic for me, I delete it for two or three days just to kind of cleanse my body and how I feel about myself. And I swear that helps so, so, so much. And also remembering what social media is for. That's why on my stories, I will have like 30 pages. But do I care if people unfollow me because I have 30 pages? No, because how I look at my Instagram is that it's a photo book or a photo album or a collection of memories for myself i'm not posting images or showing where i've gone for other people to kind of tell me off about it i'm doing it because i like how i want to do photography and things like that and i think that's something the society really needs to remember is that social media was meant to connect you the last tip that i have is to believe in something that is bigger than yourself I have said it, I think, before, but I come from a very religious family. We are Hindu, but we belong to something called the Satya Sai organization in which we are taught and uh, celebrate all religions. And with this, I've become extremely close to my religion, especially, I've always been close to my religion, but especially in the last six months, I've become extremely um, more religious. Um, and I think with believing in something that is higher than you, I'm not saying it has to be religion by no means. I'm just saying, you know, even if it's spirituality or believing in like the universe, something else that is bigger than yourself makes you feel you've been put here for a reason that is bigger than letting anyone else kind of put you down. Makes you know that the way God or the universe made you is perfect the way that you are. And when you're feeling down, praying sometimes does help regain that confidence in yourself. Along with this, I've been a conservative person my whole life. Um, and I feel a very big mix misconception about confidence is that you have to wear short clothes or a lot of makeup or you have to show off your body. But confidence comes from comfort, which can be conservative three C's and that's how I feel about myself for a very long time I felt do you think people think I'm confident or do I feel confident since I'm like always wearing cover-ups or bulky clothes and stuff and that is when I feel the most confident I feel the most confident when I am dressed conservatively because that's when I feel the most comfortable in my body I'm not comfortable showing my body to everyone but that is no uh, it's not due to the fact that I don't want to share um, what I look like or how I am it's just that I feel sometimes for me personally my conservative is where my confidence stems from I don't feel as confident when I do show off my body and things like that. so that is the end of my video I really do hope that you guys find something that is helpful from the 
tips that helped me as well as my journey. In no way am I saying that all these tips will help people. Maybe a few will, maybe none will. This is just my personal experience. And I'm also not saying that I feel this confident 100% of the time. It is just a long journey that has been happening since the last five years and I feel it was important to share. I still have insecurities on a daily basis just like everyone else just like Beyonce also has insecurities. But for the most part, I really do hope that this does help because it truly is a personal experience and it's something that has helped me. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That will mean a lot to me and hopefully will help you to never miss out on any of my future videos that might be as helpful as this or give you a future laugh. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you guys have a fantastic week ahead filled with lots of love happiness, light, positivity, and of course, confidence. Love you guys. Bye.